What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube, and today we are in the brand new 2023 Acura MDX, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Acura in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so today we are in the 2023 MDX because my mom owns one. She has owned one for quite a while now. It has been reliable for her. It is definitely last i feel like she's had it at least 10 years at this point but anyways not only that acura now offers two years or twenty-four thousand miles of free complimentary maintenance with all their new vehicles as well so you got that going for it so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so there are several different trim levels for the 2023 MDX. You got the base setup starting at $49,550, technology for $54,250, A spec for $59,950, advance, which is the one we are in today, starting at $63,500, type S for $67,850, and the type S advance for $73,200. And so those first two trim levels come standard with front wheel drive. You can add all wheel drive if you wanted to, that goes for $2,200, but all of the other trim levels after those first two come standard with all-wheel drive so you don't have to add any money to those but anyways as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are actually two different power plants available for the mdx first one belonging to the non-type s trim levels like we have today that one is powered by a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 290 horsepower at 6200 rpm 267 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm power sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which is always we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.7 seconds that is plenty respectable there with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the type s trim level that one is powered by a three liter turbocharged six cylinder putting out 355 horsepower at 5500 rpm 354 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1400 rpm power sent to all four wheels through yet again 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters 0 to 60 times slightly quicker at 5.5 seconds mpg numbers coming in at 17 in the city 21 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our mdx i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a big old circular dial located just in front of the shift buttons labeled dynamic mode and that essentially allows you to toggle between all of the drive modes including snow comfort normal sport and individual and actually the type s is going to add a couple to those including sport plus and lift because you get an air suspension but anyways we'll get more into that in a little bit but adjusting things like the shift points and throttle response steering sensitivity all-wheel drive system engagement and in the case of the type s the ride height as well and so like i said with the shift buttons there are shift buttons it's not like a traditional shifter so you actually press d for drive n is for neutral r for reverse and p for park so that's how that's gonna work but anyways now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first i'm gonna put it in full manual shift mode to do that you just press the d slash s button and then hit the paddle shifters it's gonna tell you what gear you were in up on the digital gauges up here and the digit and the gauges are digital and we'll cover those as well but anyways let's go ahead and find this straight away let's put these things to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right so I just put in first gear here we are at a standstill in three two one yell baby okay. oh it shifted <laughs> all right so not only will it shift for you if you let it get a little bit too high in the rpms but there's a slight delay to the paddle shifters and honestly it's kind of what i expected for a uh for an suv but oddly enough the rdx paddle shifters are actually kind of quick so they're quicker than the mdx so i kind of had hope but yeah there's a slight delay and it does shift for you so that's unfortunate but anyways i'm just going to go ahead and press that d button again give back full control to the mdx and uh let's do a quick little acceleration with it is for driving mode and let's see how quickly the mdx here can get us up to speed all right and three two one giddy up yeehaw it's actually quick <laughs> it's very quick yeah buddy 
That's you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. What I love about naturally aspirated engines because everything is turbocharged these days. There is no turbo delay. There's no turbo lag. So it was an instant acceleration. So you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. That was that was a fun acceleration. I gotta admit. But anyways, let me go ahead and get it back out of that sport driving mode. I'm actually gonna put it in comfort here. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important as we come up to the stop sign here. That was plenty fine. Braking feels excellent. But anyways, up front, you're gonna find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch solid rear disc. Again, braking feel is great. You actually get Brembo four piston front calipers with the Type S as well. And if you wanted that number, that 60 zero number comes in at 118 feet, which is sports sedan good, baby. Because let me tell you, typically in SUVs, you find 130s. My own personal Hyundai Santa Fe, my three row Santa Fe, comes in at right around 130 feet. So 118, that is typically what you find in sports sedan. So that is a brilliant number. And like I said, braking feel is excellent. Kind of leans on the firmer side of things, instantly brings you to a stop. So for safety reasons, I love the braking feel in the MDX. Anyways, then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, but you know what else comes standard on this thing, to my surprise? An adaptive damping suspension. So a lot of times that'll be optional, so, or upper trim levels will get it, but with the MDX, it comes standard. So essentially what that is, it's gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it's also gonna tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds, so improving handling there as well. So. For that reason, I love adaptive damping suspensions and I feel like I've driven enough vehicles at this point, you can noticeably tell the difference between one that has it and one that doesn't have it. So I love that, that's gonna give you that smoother ride. And actually, like I mentioned to you at the beginning of this video, the Type S is going to give you an adaptive air suspension with auto leveling. Meaning when you get up to higher speeds, it's going to lower the suspension a little bit, giving you better di aerodynamics. But you also have the ability to raise and lower it yourself if you wanted to as well. So that is pretty darn cool. Anyways, as far as ride quality goes, it's been 100% perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. We got a little bit of a bump here. It's, it's great, honestly. It's absorbing the rate of perfections perfectly. And like I said, I did put it in that comfort driving mode right now. So again, ride quality has been perfectly fine. And actually, let me go ahead and put it back in sport real quick. Instantly noticeable heavier steering feel. I will say that because I wanted to test out the steering sensitivity there. It is a much weightier steering feel when you put it in that sport driving mode. And then when I take it back out, it does instantly loosen up. So honestly, I love the steering feel in the sport driving mode and honestly, it's not bad in the comfort, but it is a noticeable difference. I will say that. But anyways, the touching on cabin noise are going approximately 40 miles per hour right now. There is ever so slight bit of road noise. There's no wind noise whatsoever. So I'm a big fan of that. So acoustic laminated front windshield and front side glass is definitely going to contribute to that. You usually don't get the front side glass coming standard, but the windshield almost always a luxury vehicle. So for those reasons, it's a very serene cabin here in the MDX. I will say that. Touching on visibility, I got the third row up right now and this third row headrest as well. So that is going to impede visibility slightly. If you don't have any third row passengers, you're either going to want to fold down this third row headrest or completely fold down the third row. And that's gonna make visibility 100% on point. So you shouldn't have any issues there as long as those third row headrests are not because they do block a little bit of the view there. But I will also say though, rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the technology trim level and up. So if the MDX detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So that is pretty cool. And a head up display is going to come on the advanced trim levels, which is what I'm currently looking at. Even through my sunglasses, I can still actually see it which isn't always the case but that gives you your speed speed limit and safety features projected up onto your windshield so that's pretty darn cool as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 acura mdx all right so here she is you guys the new 2023 acura mdx finished in majestic black pearl Cool name for an exterior color, but let's go ahead and start with where this one is actually made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that this one is built and assembled in America, made in America, uh, specifically Ohio, in case you were curious. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Type S badging in the front grille. If you go with the Type S trim level, obviously we don't have that, but massive front grille with a massive Acura logo. Acura always makes their logo super large, so definitely can't mistake that for anything else. 
to the sides dual eye LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. Of course, a super bright illumination there. Automatic feature coming with that along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams. So nice little convenience feature there. And then LED fog lights coming with the A spectrum leveling up. You guys can see that down below there, but also front air curtains to the sides there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination, but very masculine, very aggressive looking front end. So I'm actually a huge fan of the looks and I love this majestic black pearl color that we have here today too. It looks very darn good in black, but Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the MDX. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, let's go ahead and start all the way to the top. You do have some aluminum roof rails finished in silver, looking dang good up there. Chrome or gloss black window surrounds, depending upon the trim level that you go with. We uh, we have, it's actually like a brushed chrome or a matte chrome, if, if you will, but rear privacy glass does come standard. Taking a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They are heated with LED integrated turn signals. They're is a reverse gear tilt down feature that comes standard as well and the power folding feature that's going to come on the technology package or trim level end up so that's how that's going to work but do you like the chrome accenting kind of found on the side doors there as well that looks pretty darn good then making our way to the wheel configuration 19 by 8.5 inch alloys coming for the base trim level then 20 by 9 inch alloys coming for the technology a spec and advanced that is what we are looking at right now and I actually like the design to them as well i think it looks pretty darn good and then 21 by 9.5 inch alloys so they're getting larger and wider as well for the type s trim level so that is for uh, some added grip of course but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the mdx all the way to the top you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you got some led tail lights looking dang good for added illumination at night i love the look of that all the way to the bottom though, check out these exhaust outlets. They are massive, uh, at least the design to them. So I like them, but dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips. And I did want to also mention, if you were to go with the Type S, you're going to get quad chrome tips. So even more aggressive looking exhaust outlets. But anyways, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So but now since we are around to the back of the MDX, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate that does come standard for all trim levels. But for the advanced trim levels, you're going to get a hands-free power tailgate. So if your hands are full with groceries or kids or whatever, just simply kick your foot underneath of that rear bumper. It's going to automatically open up for you. But once opened up, yes, the MDX is a three-row SUV. So behind that third row, it's going to come in at 16.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down behind the second row it's going to come in at 39.1 cubic feet with all rows folded 71.4 cubic feet so not the most space out there not as much as a honda pilot but it's a decent amount so cargo lining can be found back there grocery bag hooks there's chrome plated tie down anchors there's a cargo cover available there is some in-floor storage and actually a decent amount as well behind that third row so that was pretty cool that's going to add some storage maybe for an ice scraper or a tire inflator kit or something like that so pretty much everything you possibly want in the cargo area at least but then making our way to the third row legroom surprisingly coming in at 29.1 inches so i've seen that third row come in at worst that's why i put it that way so i'll give this a shot for you guys for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the third row at least so not the most for an adult but i do actually think a kid should be able to fit back there and cool thing is third row passengers not only get cup holders, but they actually get USB charging ports for both sides as well, which surprised me. My kids love to stay charged up, so that is a big deal. So I like that. But anyways, then make our way to the second row legroom coming in at 38.5 inches. For reference, again, I'm an even six feet tall. That's how much space I have back there. Tri-zoom climate control is going to come standard for all trim levels. I want to mention that because the rear passengers then can set their own temperatures. So that's pretty cool. As far as rear 
through ventilation goes, there is some for the second row passengers, basically, and that gets pushed to the third row. But USB charging ports, of course, coming standard for all trim levels across the board, also for those second row passengers, so second and third row. A 120 volt power outlet coming with the Advance and Type S trim levels. So if you wanted to charge up maybe a hair straightener or a drill or something like that, you can do that. So that's pretty cool. Heated second row seats then coming for the Advanced trim levels. So we got those as well, spoiling the rear passengers a little bit. And then if you were to go with the technology trim level and up, you're also going to get rear window sunshades, which again, we have. So I always like that feature because whenever you get Chick-fil-A and your kids are eating in the back seat of the car, sometimes you park in a parking lot to actually eat it. And one of the kids always has the sun in their eyes. So rear window sunshades are helpful for those kind of things. But anyways, to make our way up to the front seats, leather at finish is gonna come with the base trim level. Milano premium leather for the technology trim level and up. You're gonna get a leather suede combination for the A spec and type S trims. 12-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar does come standard. 16-way power adjustable front seats with power thigh extensions and power side bolsters for the advanced trim level, so I like that. Memory settings are actually going to come standard on every single trim level across the board for not just the driver, but the passenger as well. That's something Mercedes kind of pioneered, I think, and uh, still very few manufacturers do that, so I love that Acura is doing that here. Heated front seats coming standard for all trim levels across the board, and then ventilated front seats for the A-spec trim level and up, but Acura always does a very good job with their seats lately, mainly because their vertical seams in them, as opposed to horizontal seams, which pretty much every other manufacturer does, maybe with the exception of Lexus sometimes, but still the vertical seams don't create any awkward pressure points that the horizontal seams typically do. So for that reason, seating was plenty comfortable for my six foot self, so big fan of that. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is actually power adjustable for all trim levels across the board, that's pretty cool. Leather wrapped for all trims as well. You will get a flat bottom steering wheel for the A spec and type S trim levels. And then heated steering wheel is gonna come with the advanced trim levels and i do have that on because super cold here in pa uh 22 degrees oh it went up cool it was 16 degrees earlier but anyways then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your acura logo on the one side acura spelled out on the side of the key and on the other side all of your buttons lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and the engine hold button that's going to be a remote start which comes on the advanced and type s trim levels but it is all keyless entry with the push button start for all trim levels across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver and red engine start button located just to the left of the air vents but so then once started up acura did a dang good job at their gauge cluster here 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard for every single trim level across the board. I gotta love that. And the cool thing is when you actually change the drive modes, it changes the color and kind of the readout of those uh, gauges as well. So if I put it in comfort, it's gonna kind of just give me this blue hue. When I put it in normal, it's gonna be, give me a tachometer to the left, speedometer to your right, and a white hue. If I put it in sport, it's gonna kind of make the tachometer front focus with a digital speedometer finished in a red hue. So basically a bunch of different looks for each individual driving mode. And that's what that sound is you guys are hearing in the background is me changing the drive mode. So I love that. And of course you can control what is on that digital gauge cluster with the steering wheel mounts controls found on the right side of the steering wheel as well giving you things like your oil life we're at 100 percent right now so that's pretty cool i always like that tire pressure information how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature the list goes on basically everything you could possibly want on those digital gauges there so very good job acura but then making our way to overall interior quality panoramic moon roof is going to come with all trim levels across the board gotta love that homelink controls are up to three different garage doors found just below that frameless rear view mirror also coming standard for all trim levels wireless phone charger coming standard for all trim levels tri-zoom climate control standard for all trim levels as well uh, technology trim level and up is going to give you 27 colors of ambient lighting. That's pretty cool. That frameless rear view mirror I was mentioning, that is also auto dimming. So if somebody has their high beams on behind you, that's going to take care of that for you. Brushed aluminum trim is going to come standard, but there's open pore wood trim for the advanced trim levels. That's what we have with us here today, of course. Stainless steel pedals is going to come with the A spec and type S trim levels. And again, overall interior quality is dang good. I have only one constructive criticism when it comes to the interior quality is there is a heck of a lot of matte plastic just around the cup holders and the touchpad controller and the volume dial here 
I don't like matte black plastic. They could have either finished in this, this in a gloss black like they did around the shift buttons or they could have put maybe a texturized plastic silver finish with the design to it maybe. It still can be plastic, but the matte plastic, that's what's in budget cars and that should not be the case in the MDX. But the rest of it though is phenomenal. I like the wood trim. I like the texturized matte wood trim, I should say. I like all the gloss black finishes. I like the contrast stitching. I like the two-tone color theme that we got going with the saddle brown leather and the black leather as well. So everything else is great. I only got that one constructive piece of criticism there, but let's take a look at how much center armrest space we have here. A uh, decent amount. And you got a USB charging port and a 12 volt power outlet and actually some LED lighting in there as well, which you typically don't find. So overall, it's plenty fine for me. But so to make our way to the infotainment screen now, there is a 12.3 inch infotainment screen to match the 12.3 inch gauge cluster as well. It is not touchscreen. It is a little too far of a reach to be touchscreen, quite honestly. Everything is controlled by using the touchpad controller and buttons located just behind the shift buttons there. So Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Both of them are wireless. That is usually not the case on, I would say, 90% of other vehicles right now. So that's pretty cool. Factory navigation system coming with the technology trim level and up. You can adjust your climate control settings up there as well, along with your radio information. So let's get to the sound systems here. So there are actually three different sound systems available for the MDX. Base setup is gonna give you nine speakers. Technology trim is gonna give you a 12 speaker ELS studio sound system. And then for the A-spec trim level and up, you're gonna get a 16 speaker ELS studio sound system. And ELS studio has been absolutely crushing it lately. So what do you guys say? I'm gonna turn down the heat here. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our 16 speaker ELS studio sound system that we have with us here today. As I see a bald eagle fly by, that is an incredible sound system. Ton of bass with that thing. Clarity was 100% on point as well. ELS Studio just gets better and better. Honestly, I think I still like it the best in the Integra, believe it or not. And the RDX is really good with ELS as well. So excellent sound system without a doubt. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the MDX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board and a surround view monitor with the advanced trim levels giving you that bird's eye view to the right there, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard for all trims across the board. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning then as well. So. Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the MDX, great safety, of course, IHS Top Safety Pick Plus, good handling as well, especially in that sport driving mode, it really gives you a nice steering feel to this thing. Excellent sound system, ELS Studio, I think is my new favorite sound system for all manufacturers out there, so that is pretty darn good. Digital gauges look dang good as well, I gotta say. I like the, how they differ slightly depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. And I also like that they kept the non-Type S trim levels as not turbocharged, that they're naturally aspirated. So naturally aspirated engines typically having longer shelf lives, so I guess you could say, than uh, their turbocharged counterparts. So I like the reliability, and like I said, my mother's had hers for like a decade now, so it's been perfectly fine. So reliability is always important. Uh, the only constructive criticism I can think of is I don't know if it's constructive criticism for the MDX specifically as it is just for Acura as a brand is they need to get a bigger SUV so even the Honda Pilot has what 87 cubic feet now of total cargo space whereas this thing is still right at around 71 72 cubic feet they need something to compete at that particular size SUV here, at least in the US. And I think that's what they're missing. So they either need to make the MDX a little bit bigger or they need to make another something DX, a ZDX or whatever you want to call it, Acura, just to give what most Americans are looking for, I think, which is just a lot more space in SUVs. So anyways, 
that's my constructive criticism. Let me know what you guys think in the new MDX in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Stay gold.